Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this video I'm going to discuss variables in Construct 2, the HTML5 game framework or program or tool or whatever. First I'm going to open up Construct 2, I'm going to close the start page by clicking on the X next to it, I'm going to go to File, go to New and then I'm going to go to New Empty Project. I'm then going to hold down Control and I'm going to mouse wheel out. I just tend to do that just to get an overview of the layout. Now what are variables? Now variables are values which can vary, uh, hence the name, that's kind of what they are. They're, they're values which you can change but you don't have to change them. And different objects can have var um, variables, so for example if I create a sprite um, and then let's just colour this in a nice light green colour. And if I come over here to the left making sure I've selected this sprite I can see the words instant variable. I can click on instant variable and I can click on this plus button to add an instant variable. I can give it a name such as a example name and this can be either a number or it can be a boolean or a text. Now this basically determines the type of variable I want to save. So for example if I wanted to save text information I would choose type text here and then I'd put in some text information such as that then click on OK. Um, however if I wanted this to be a number I, t I change the type to number. I can't put text into here because when I try and press OK, um, it just converts it to a um, a number such as that. But I can put a new number in here. Click on OK, and it changes the initial value to a number. And this is initial value because while your game is running, you can actually change this value. Um, you may also know that these other variables, such as layer, angle, opacity of the sprite, are technically variables in themselves and you can actually reference these and you can change them as well. Now the other inf um, instance variable type is boolean. Um, boolean is basically uh, a digital type of information or variable. It's either 0 or 1 or false or true. So 2 where 0 would be false and 1 would be true. And so I can actually type in uh, true here and it'd be okay. I don't think I can type in any other characters nope it just changes it to false. Normally with JavaScript if you would have some text within a variable that would uh, if you were to check that that would be true and if there wasn't anything it would be zero. There are other types which aren't considered in Construct 2 because they were worked out behind the scene, scenes such as the variable type null um, and other things like that. On top of that the variable type number includes both whole numbers known as integers such as that, um, such as that. Uh, it also in, um, includes floating numbers, which are basically decimal numbers. Um, oh, I didn't like that at all. Maybe. Oh no, it has. If you look here to the left, it has actually changed it. Um, but the initial value here is displayed in this way. So that's an instant variable, <coughs> and it's an, a variable of this instance of this sprite. Now if I right click and click on clone this will also have that instant variable because it has cloned that and I can simply change this instant variable or add another one and because it's a clone and not a copy it won't actually change anything with this one, with this original um, sprite which I'm going to change its colour slightly so we can see the difference. But if I right click and click on copy and then click on paste it's inherited again the instant variables and if I add a new instant variable for example variable 1 then the original um, sprite also has that new instant variable however both of these can have different instant variables because they do different instances of the same sprite so they can actually have different variables here and you could use that by labeling these different variables with a number which assigns these to a number in a way and then using that to identify them now instant variables can be used to store data and there are other methods to store data for example arrays, dictionaries, um, XML and web storage to store other parts of da your data of your game. Um, on top of that different things such as an array which isn't displayed in the actual layout editor but as you can see we have selected it and if you were to cl um, click on instant variable you can give an array an instant variable as well and that's despite arrays themselves storing uh, information. So instant variables can be very good. Now there are other types of variables and you can find these in the event sheet. If I right click anywhere and click on add global variable it can be whatever name so for example 
global variable and this can either be a number or a text um, type I can also give this a description and this global variable is now available to every event sheet because it's global not just the event sheet that it's within and if you change the global event sheet in this um, at the beginning in your first layout then it will change in another layout so for example if I open up a project right click and close this project and just to open up a project which I've been opening up recently actually in some other videos and let's take a look at some of the um, uh, yeah, events so I have this fade event sheet and this event sheet basically creates the transition um, which closes the top and bottom of the layouts together as you can see there I just refresh this so this event basically controls that movement uh, it comes down again and then it opens up again um, and I call that fade because normally I have a fade transition but in this case it's moving and fade is a smaller word than calling it transition uh, I hope you didn't hear that music that made me jump if you did um, I'm just going to close that so it doesn't come on again okay so um, yeah if you notice at the top I have a global variable which is a global text variable called next layout and what what happens in my event is that when a function is called um, basically it's a function called on ne next layout and I call it from other layouts and event sheets then I set the global variable up here to the text found in the first parameter of this function and this is called basically the text this changes uh, and its value changes I then can refer to that global variable um, elsewhere so for example I go to a layout by its name and I just put the name of the global variable in there and I, I'm able to do that now this is different from something called um, local variables local variables are variables which are found within groups or nearby to functions or under functions and they can only be referred to within that area of your code and I'm actually going to close this again go to file go to new um, go to new empty project and give you an example if I double click sorry if I right click and click on add global variable and I add a global variable right click and add a group this can be just I'm just going to leave this as group go to add add sub event and every tick um, and if I click on write and add another global variable this is called global variable 2 they have to be independent names because you can't have the same name but if I drag this because I can drag this around the event sheet and drag it within a group and now is now called a local number and this local number can only be referred to um, so if I add an action set value global uh, variable value I can set this to three let's say or four but if I actually I just I'll just tidy this up to make it easier to read so I'm going to draw this group this group every tick and press control C control V to copy it right click on this and call this now start of layout I'm going to delete this variable number two which is a local variable and because this local variable is different from this local variable it can actually have the same name um, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to double click on this event I'm going to change it to on start of layout I'm going to go to add action go to system go to set value and I'm going to click on this drop down menu and this tells you this tells me the scope of this event in this action I can only change the name of variable one which is actually the global variable up here variable one I can change that but I can't actually see or I can't see or this action is not within the scope of the local number because the local number can only be seen or is in the scope of the its local conditions and local um, actions and this means these local numbers can be used for temporary temporarily holding information so you may for example have a function which calls an action and above that you have a local number which is only used once or twice whereas global variables can be seen everywhere if I right click on event sheet click on an add an event sheet I can actually I can actually see that global variable from this event sheet as well global variable so I can set global variables from this event sheet but I can only 
set this local variable within the scope. And the reason that's done, it's done deliberately to match JavaScript and its use of scope. Um, and if you're finding it difficult to understand what scope is, imagine a telescope. A telescope can only see things within its field of view and it can't see everything else. And your your action, your condition is kind of looking through the telescope and it can only see certain variables within that view, i.e. the local variables, such as this. Now normally you don't want to overuse global variables to store information and if I, I'll just give you an example if I can press Control C and V to copy these and copy several of these so I've got quite a few in fact I've got 57 of them because it goes from 1 to 3 and this is 58 if I wanted to set global variables and I have all those variables then I'll have a huge list and it starts to become unmanageable unmanageable if it's too big. Also because you can actually reference global variables this value for example would be global variable 16 um, then plus another global variable 1 you'll notice that it makes things a bit more awkward because it just takes up space. So there are other ways to store information such as with arrays which makes storing uh, information a bit more manageable. On top of that you, if you use local variables for um, short-term variable storing or manipulation it's a lot better uh, practice than using global variables because again global variables can be used in other event sheets so it can become a bit of a nuisance. Now sometimes you actually want uh, event sheets but you may you may have downloaded a capex file and you wanted to move a global variable from one sheet to another sheet and you'll see it down here or you may for example want to move a global variable from one of your event sheets to another one. To do that you simply press Control X which cuts and copies your global variable. You'll see this delete event. It says deleting a global or local variable also deletes its actions and doing so it actually removes this action here but when I come into another sheet right click and sorry press Control P to paste these actions then reappear so this action has now reappeared. So to move global um, numbers, I'll do that again, press Control X to cut them, press yes, and then move it to where you want it, and you press Control V to paste it. And I'll move that above there. Oh, it's changed it as a local variable. Sorry. Be careful when you're moving things above groups and objects. Make sure you go to the top left of the group to make sure it goes above it. If you just simply put it above it, sometimes it can include it within it. There is an a line you can see which tells you where it's going but sometimes it it acts a bit funny. Um, so that's basically global variables and local variables. Now local variables can be static. Normally when you um, use local variables when the events, uh, so when these conditions are met, so these actions are called and they use the local variable information they reset the information back to the original information so, so in this case it will be zero every second because every time this is called it then it resets this to zero and then it sets this action to four. To make sure um, you can change the variables and keep them changed so you may actually be increasing the number you double click on it and make sure static is selected um, and this means it remembers the changes that have been made to the variable so it can now be constantly changed and the changes are saved as it were. Now both global variables and um, local variables can be constant and if you click on constant that means these are non-changing so you're changing a non-constant variable to a constant one any action setting the variable will be removed um, so basically a constant, a constant variable <laughs> as this is has its letters now all in upper caps and you can change it back from a constant just by doing that but it automatically has all of its letters changed to capital letters and they don't revert back as you see if I get rid of the constant and it means you can't change this value at all so if I set this as 5 then any actions um, I can't can't even set it with the actions. And every any action um, originally changing this number five gets deleted, uh, and you can't change this number. I.e., it's constant. And you can do the same with global variables. You can make them constant. 
so that they they remain that number throughout the duration of your game and that can be useful if you're not planning on changing a variable at all so for example the amount of points awarded when you collect a coin may only be one because points may be referring to how many coins you have you don't need to change the number so you can keep it as a constant number um, but one thing to be careful is uh, wary of if you do this is that um, Construct 2 will delete all the actions which originally allowed you to change these variables and I'll just show that again so if I click on constant so this is not constant anymore it's a static number I even get rid of the static click on add action so every every tick I'm going to add variable 2 by 1 every tick it's going to add this variable by 1 now if I go to local variable and click on um, sorry click on constant click on OK it has now deleted that action so that this remains as a constant so that's the basics of variables there's instant variable this instant variable sorry global variables and local variables um, there are other ways of storing information such as in arrays and other objects and plugins and I will discuss those in later videos I hope you found this video um, informative thank you very much and please remember to subscribe if you like it thank you